subject, how to see angels. It's yeah, going to be a very quick one, but you have to write notes. And if you can write notes, brilliant. If you can't write notes, it's also brilliant. As long as you can remember what we are saying. In fact, there is not even time to write notes. We're going to be delivering them like this, like this, like this, like this, and you catch it. How many are ready to actually see angels? Yes, sir. Now, what I'm going to teach you is going to be so, so simple that you actually think it doesn't work. Okay. Most things of the Spirit are very simple. That's why Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God is for such as these. In other words, if your message is so complicated that a five-year-old can't understand it, go home. Okay. Uh -huh. yes, sir, we're here. That means the realities of the kingdom can be explained to a little baby, and that little baby will understand them. Uh -huh. As much as they can be complicated, a teacher of the word should be able to exegete scripture to a level where somebody says, I understand what you are saying. Yes, sir. I don't know if you are hearing me. Yes, so around the world right now, wherever you are, raise your hands. I want you to see what we are seeing. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I decree and declare, Amen. anoint their eyes with eyes out so they can see. Amen. Remove every bit of anything that can remove their sight from seeing you. Yes. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare, increase over their lives. Amen. Right now, let their eyes see. Amen. Let things begin to change. Amen. Let their spirits be awakened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. You see, most times when we talk, you see, this, this message was never supposed to be how to see angels. It was supposed to be how to see angels, angelic beings, angels and elders in the spirit and spirits of just men made perfect. Wow. The Bible says it, they say, we are come unto Mount Zion yes, unto an innumerable number of angels. Yes, and if we are come unto Mount Zion unto an innumerable number of angels, how come the church is not seeing the angels? Mm -hmm. How come it's only a few of us that can talk about it? Yes, sir. In the morning, I dealt with this subject of how not to be left behind. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Thank you. And some of course you were in your, in, your, in your branches and you might not have had the crooks of the message. The message is simple, that the Bible says it this way, that when the trumpet shall sound at the twinkling of an eye, yes. right? Uh -huh. And I dealt with something that is called superpositioning yes, in sound systems, yes. superpositioning, yes, uh, or rather um, a constructive interference. What that, or ultrasound, you know ultrasound, when you have an ultrasound scan, yes, sir. most people think ultrasound means it is at very low levels. It is a high-pitched level of sound that your ear can't catch. Wow. Imagine a sound can be produced that your ear can't catch, yet it is the loudest. <laughs> That's what the Bible says, and the Lord shall descend with the voice of an archangel, uh -huh. yes. with an ultrasound hey. that your ear can't catch. But notice, the dead will hear it first. That means the sound that shall be produced will only make the dead hear. Wow. That means the dead have not heard this, that sound. It's a coded sound that not everybody hears. Yes, so in the day of the rapture, on the day of the rapture, it's not so much how close you have been with God. It's not so much how close you've been with the men of God. It's not so much how many Sundays you attended or how many prayer meetings you attended. It is the positioning of your spirit to hear the sound. So when your spirit can't hear the sound, you're not going. You might be a bishop. You might be a prophet. You might be an act prophet. You're not going. Wow. So while it's every Christian is happy that the rapture will come, we are going by the rapture, you are lying to yourself. Is your spirit enough, attuned enough to actually catch the sound, the ultrasound that others are not catching? I don't know if, you, if the, it's getting there. Yes, sir. So we can, that's what the Bible, as we're looking at it in the book of Matthew, says, one shall be taken, another shall remain. Two men will be in bed, one will be taken. Women will be grinding. Two, one will be going, and one will be left. And they are there. Why? Because the spirit of one responds to the sound. As a deer panted for the waters, my soul panted after thee. The deep calleth unto the deep. In other words, my deep is to respond to a deep. It's a sound that only my spirit can catch. So some will never catch that spirit. Right. 
You never, and notice here, it says when the last trumpet shall sound. Now it says the last trumpet. That means you should have heard the second last before this last one. Yet you never heard it. Now if you never heard it and in that service, I was standing there, then I called another lady at the back. And I said, you, you're going to have, your two children are coming back. A boy and a girl. Your prayer is done. And I said, you see, I'm standing here. Two children, right? Yes. You met your husband uh, online when we're doing lives. Yes. How do I have that information inside a church? The lady is in the middle row. In fact, the last row. Yes. And I'm in front. How am I tuning to hear that sound? Yes. And yet somebody next to me didn't hear it. Yes, sir. An outro sound happened. And the whole church didn't hear it. I heard it. Yes. Now imagine during the rapture what shall take place. When God speaks something, people think it's going to be like a boom. And sound everywhere. CNN catches it. No. Christians won't catch it. It is the sensitivity of your spirit that gets you to hear. Now let's go back to angels. Thank you, sir. So when we're dealing with this thing, remember, remember this. What takes you to heaven is your sensitivity to the sound, number one. Number two is the body that has been transformed. And Jesus produced that body, but for that body to be produced in you so that it takes over your flesh. It needs something that we call constructive interference. Constructive interference when, is when a sound wave of the same magnitude collides with another sound wave of the same magnitude. It changes the level of this magnitude and goes to another level of a magnitude. That means it changes its properties to become another wave which is bigger than this one. So now this is your flesh. You hear a sound and you are vibrating. Your spirit is vibrating at the same frequency with the, with the trumpet score. So now this wave is bringing this magnitude and this wave is bringing the same magnitude and they collide. My spirit colliding with the sound of the trumpet produces the body that, I will, that will carry me to heaven. Now, so now if that doesn't happen, you will not have the body to go with. So you remain here. So you will be a Christian who has been left behind because you thought your membership was going to take you. You thought your partnership is going to take you. It's not. It is the sensitivity of your spirit. I, um, Pastor Keith called me one uh, to, this morning. He has access to me, of course. He called me this morning and said, thank you. And then he sent a message. He said, oh, in fact, there was an elder who thought to leave the church. I said, you know, I don't hear these messages, you know. I don't really kind of hear messages like that because these messages, you know? And I said, oh, okay. Uh, um, that's, that's good. Um, so, so I said, okay, it's all right. I just said it in my head. Then I read the whole story and I had something um, that is so extraordinary. I don't know if you're hearing me. Yes, sir. I don't know if you're hearing me. Yes, sir. Somebody here is about to be blessed. Amen. Angry is about to come to your house. Amen. You are not going to be left behind. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I heard this thing. This person is about to leave. I'm like, okay, that's not a problem. Then immediately I started reading. And I heard something very profound. Let me... Let me just see this. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Now, I think she was now, she said, now I'm leaving the church. Maybe she's sitting in, his, in her house, right? She's already made a point, I'm leaving church. A voice entered the house. You're not going anywhere. Come on, come on. Oh, you, you see, not getting this. Now, now, don't just imagine. The Lord spoke. I'm not talking about she felt in it. No. An audible voice came in. He said, you're not going anywhere. You're not leaving where I put you. I made everything done, settled in your heart. Everyone is told, oh, we are leaving now. 
<laughs> God is like, where are you trying to go? But do you understand that if your spirit was not active, yes. that voice she had would not be. Now when the last trumpet shall sound, it is people like that who hear things like that. Remember, it is called the last one. Yes. What about the other ones? Yes. Were you hearing them? Yes. Now you only read the Bible and says the last one. What about the first, the second, the third, the number 19 sound, a trumpet? Did you hear it? Because this last means the last after the last of the last. It means it's not a close. You get to your car into a close. You know behind that house may be another road. Now when you hear that word last, it actually means there is no more. When you go behind that road, the earth has ended. Wow. Have you ever heard of a na names of villages that you think this is the end of the world? <laughs> when you get there behind that, there is nothing. That's exactly what that word means. The last trumpet, the word last. It doesn't mean last born. You can change and have another one. But when you get to the last, it was used for sheep docking where there is no more sea to go. There's no more sea for the sheep to go, even if it wants to go. There's nothing. That's the word. It is used for, for cargo ships. That's the end of it. Now hear this now. Imagine you are sitting in there and say, you're not going anywhere. The one who you worship tells you you're not going anywhere. But if she could not discern that, she could have gone. I would have not even known that she left. Because I don't know anyone who is in any branch. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But the Lord had to visit her and say this. Imagine if your testimony is God told me. <laughs> you know, you can have a testimony of getting 20 million. But when the testimony is God spoke to me, turned me around. That's what the Bible says, I could not deny the vision. Oh, King Agrippa. So I could not deny the vision. Are you getting this? Now here we are dealing with uh, the subject of angels. The book of Matthew. Remember, we're dealing with seeing angels. The book of Matthew. Verse number 19. Seeing angels is the easiest thing, but you, you have to hear it now. How to see angels. Ancients. You know when I say angels, I mean, you're talking to Abraham, you say hi. You know when I talk about this, it's like, you know, sometimes I don't even want to deal with it. Because you deal with it, someone will be like, is it really possible? <laughs> Why is it that I'm, I'm so interested in getting you to see what I see? Because sometimes when I start saying, oh, I saw this, I saw this. Somebody who has never seen anyway, nothing, even a frog in a dream. Doesn't even get what we're trying to say. So the ability of a preacher to teach you or impart on you the ability to see what he sees so that when he communicates, it's no longer something strange. Amen. Amen. It's not something strange. It's something real. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, Lay not up for yourselves. Treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. Says so here, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where thieves break and steal. Are you getting this? Don't. How do you do it? You do it in the spirit. You do the, the word of God begins the thing, becomes the thing, the standard for your life. That means when you start reading the scriptures, that's why my man of God says, Go, if you go for the word, you come back with the testimony. Amen. Yes. So how do you lay up treasures? You lay up treasures by going for the word. Yes, sir. Now hear this. Are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, we're going there. Sure. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where does moth, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. Here it is. Ah. If therefore your eye is single or focused, 
Your whole body shall be full of light. No, 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 no. If you notice, it says the light of the body is what? The eye. If therefore your eye is focused, mm -hmm. what happens? The whole body shall be full of light. Let's, let's read it the way the King James Angel would talk about. <laughs> the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be focused, your whole body shall be full of eyes. Full of what? Eyes. Light, which is eyes. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, on, that means, imagine I was in, in London. Remember in London, as I was ministering, and I said, mark this time now. Yeah. And I said, there is an angel. I, I, I turned around and looked after I said it. Nobody thought of it, that the angel I saw was behind me. Uh -huh. How am I seeing something behind me that I said, mark that? Yeah. Something just happened here. And I'm going this side, because my body is now full of eyes. Oh. <laughs> Bring it on. Wow. Uh -huh. It's no longer a sensing I have yes. uh -huh. that there is an angel behind me. Uh -huh. or to, no, there is an eye. I can describe him while he's facing that direction. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not getting what I'm saying. I, I know you, you, you see, if therefore your body is focused, then your body shall be full of light. But the Bible has already said your eye is the light. So your body shall be full of eyes. Uh -huh. uh, I told you it's going to be a very short service. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. But if your eye is evil, oh. that means everybody has an eye. Oh. If the eye then is not excised unto righteousness through the word, yes, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Wow. Now, if therefore the light that is in you is darkness, you are in great darkness. So great darkness can be confused for light. Yes, sir. So when we talk about seeing angels, somebody sitting there going like, guys, it's not possible. Why? They are very educated in the things of the spirit in an evil way. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Oh, yes, sir. You're not getting this now. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something that might shock you. The civilization of the immortals. Spirits don't care about your office or your gift. Come on now. If demons come here, the sons of Skeva were sons of a priest. Mm. Right. Demons didn't care the position. Uh, mm. In the realm of the spirit and the civilization of spirits, what is important is light. How much light do you possess? Come on. So too many people are busy trying to pray. Prayer will not make you see angels. Fasting will not make you see angels. I am here to submit it and I'm telling you now. Fasting will never make you see angels. You are hallucinating if you see angels by fasting. It's the hunger that has ended. Come on now. Hunger. You are thinking of fufu, sadza. And it is white. Angels also show white clothes. Here you go. <laughs> In the civilization of, of immortals, how are you able to meet and interact with, with Abraham and Abraham's sister and Paul's sister? Are you, 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 <laughs> ah, imagine seeing him and say, I'm Peter. He said, Which Peter? The apostle. Do you need to ask anything? He said, We have not followed cunningly devised fables yes, or old wise tales. We were eyewitnesses of these things. Uh -huh. so, for me, I saw this. I know you're not getting this, and I'm trying to I'm trying to get you to. So if it is the realm of the eye. That God is saying is an entrance to the spirit. Now I have to understand how the eye captures things. Let me come back to your normal, normal you so that I make it very simple. You see this camera here? It's just a digital one, but let me use whatever. The word camera came from what is called camera obscura. It simply means dark chamber. Oh yes, when you are holding your camera and taking photos, 
that thing is called a dark chamber. That's the meaning of camera obscura. That's where you, you get the word camera, dark chamber. So it is a location where you trap light. Oh, okay. you're not getting this. Uh -huh, bring it on. Wow. That means the camera was actually designed after they looked at your eye. Oh. Darkness inside. Yeah. Wow. And an iris to open up so light can enter. So it's a triple light. Uh -huh. So you can only see based on the light that has entered your iris. Uh -huh. mm -mm. No, no, you see, see, you're missing this. I know you're missing this. Uh, bring it on, sir. Bring it on. <laughs> Now, are you hearing this or you have gone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, when it enters your iris and you go and, and it is ended and it flips, if I'm looking at you right now, you are upside down at the back of my eye. Oh. And the brain is the one that puts it upside, right side up. Hey. Uh -huh. In other words, whatever you enters you is obscured or rather uh, obscured until the light that is in you which is the word in you, fixes the positioning of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, no, no, you, you're getting this now? I know I've, I've, to some of you, you are, you're just on revelation. You haven't gotten what I'm trying to say. So I, I, I get it, I get it. Are you still here? Yes, sir. What, are you still here? Yes, sir. Man wrote again, I want you to go to Colossians, Colossians 1, uh, 12. Colossians 1, 12. Is a lenum friendness, Tagida Tai. Man low friend as Gisa. Colossians 1, 12. Uh huh. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. The word meet there is suitable, not meet. Mm hmm. Which has made us meet to be partakers of, his, of the inheritance of the saints in life. That means he has made us meet. He has made us suitable to participate in the inheritance. Where is the inheritance? In light. Even the things God is going to give you are in light. So if you don't have light, you can't interact with light. Angels are what? Are winds, but they are light. They are made out of light. So for you to interact with light, you have to have light. Ah. Hear this. My suit right here, I don't know what TV you're watching from. What are we watching me on? Uh, this, is, this is a brown kind of suit with some black whatever. Notice here. Your TV might actually show you this, show this as a black suit. Yes, sir. Right. Now, some, of, some of you is red. <laughs> Depending on whether you have Shamshang or Samsa. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to say now? <laughs> now, that means, are you seeing this right? Yes. Oh. Let's go. Oh, I wish you were here. Let's go. Bring it on. Bring it on, sir. The civilization of immortals is controlled by light. The man who controls light controls everything. Even God is light. Yes. If God wasn't light, he wouldn't create anything. Because it is light that creates the energy. Sound waves and light are related. If you say what types of lights, give me the types of lights that are there, you will see ultrasound. You'll be like, ah, is it light? Sound waves are involved. You think, what is this? The reality is simple. Are you hearing this? Yes, or you've gone home? Some people are waking up. Bring it on. Sir, bring it on. and Cavalli. Charlie Gouvretas. Are you still flowing? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hear this. Matthew 4, verse number 15. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. bring it on. Matthew 4, 15. Matthew 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The land of Zabulon. Land of Zabulon. And the land of Naphtali. Naphtali. By, by the, the way, way of, of the, the sea. sea. <laughs> Beyond, Beyond Jordan. Jordan. Galilee, Galilee of Galilee. Of Gentiles. <laughs> <laughs> Those who sit in great darkness saw a great light. Yes. Even Jesus was light. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I told you a camera is simply called camera obscura, which means a light, a darkness chamber, dark chamber. It is there to trip the light. Mm. And when it trips the light, it sends it to the back of the camera, mm -hmm. and then a photo is made. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why negatives are developed. In a dark location. 
No, you didn't hear what I'm trying to say. You're you're, you're missing that, right? Mm. Mm. Ah. So sometimes, just just so that we can have a certain kind of a a detour, I want to decree decree and declare to somebody here who is going through darkness Uh that remember negatives are developed Uh in darkness. Uh You you are about to become a photographer. Oh, you did hear that. You'll get it in a few minutes. You'll get it in a few minutes. And you'll be enjoying the memories. Now, hear this now. Hear this clearly. So, 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 what I'm trying to say is this. The Bible says, the entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance of thy word. When we read what we read here, watch this. When we read what we read here, I want you to understand. Knowledge in the realm of the spirit is measured through light. No, 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 you didn't hear me. Uh-huh. It is not your position. It is not the degree you did. Mm. It is measured by the amount of light that is in you. Mm. How much light is inside you? Mm. The learned ones in the realm of the spirit are seen by light. Wow. So if you have light, they say he is, is, is a, he is a PhD. Uh. <laughs> your degree won't... You will leave your certificates here when we go to heaven. Right. Uh-huh. But when you enter the realm of heaven, just enter like this. Come on. You start seeing. That's what the Bible says. We shall glow with a different glow in heaven. Uh-huh. Why? Uh-huh. That's what will show you uh-huh. who was studying and who was it. Uh-huh. We will see you approaching a little bit of darkness on you. No, no, no. Uh, it will just be light, but it's not, it's not really a, 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 a nice light. You, we can tell mm, you, you got some light, but you are a junior. You think when we get to heaven, you can send Peter to take to fetch some water? <laughs> Peter. There are 24 elders sitting around the throne. Ah. You're going to send them. You. Why? They have a certain light that you don't have. I know if you're, if you're here, you are going to... Somebody's like, just tell us how to see angels now. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting this. So there are so many people here that don't get what I'm about to say. Uh I don't know if you're getting this. Jesus said this. What the truth you know shall make you free. So in the realm of the spirit, it is the truth you know that makes you free. Uh But the truth you know is what gives you the light you have. I know you're about to miss this and I don't want you to miss this and I'm trying not to really be too complicated. I just want to tell you this. So for me to be able to see that this suit is brown, I need to be in a light that corresponds with the eye that I'm... Okay. So I don't need... Watch this. Most people see this, this notebook here. Light is falling on the notebook, right? Light is falling on the notebook. So in their mindset... It is the light that is falling there that is making me to be able to see it. Imagine you are in a dark, dark room and you're looking for 20 pounds that you lost somewhere. You go there trying to feel, right? And somebody puts the torch in the corner and says, oh, wow, that's 20 pounds. Your mindset is light fell on the 20 pounds. No, it fell in your eye for you to be able to see the 20 Nah, I don't know if they're getting this. You know, it's so easy for people to think, yeah, if there was no light, I would not have seen it. No, there was no light in your eye. Ah, If light fails to enter your iris, how come blind people can't see? And light is there. Because nothing is entering. There's no light entering in the eyes. So though the room is full of light, the blind man is still blind. Until light is allowed to enter into their eye and give them access to what they should see. Hear this now. So this suit is not brown when we get to heaven. It is only brown because of the light level that entered your eye. I don't know if they're getting this. You, have you ever heard people, you say they are colorblind? Yes, they're not. It's the light that is entering their eye. 
This is different from yours. So where, you, where they see maroon, you see pink. And you accuse them for not understanding colors. Whereas the reality is the light that has just entered them is way different to yours. Uh, I don't know if you are getting this now. So the color you call yellow is not yellow. I was taken to heaven one time and you look at it and you see the colors. They look like they can talk. You know the red we see here is not the red in heaven. You just know that's red. It's related to our red, but this is not red. Wow. When you are told, tell me, what is that you say is red? And when you try to figure out why was I calling it red and why was the Lord saying that's red? That on earth, this is not red. <laughs> it looks liquid. It looks like it can talk to you, communicate and direct. Oh, the green, the, I remember looking at flowers and they are not even, I, I know this, I'm not talking about color here. When you look at flowers and you step on them, they end up through your 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 leg they pass through your leg and turn around to look at you you know they're actually greeting you they are alive i've not seen anything today i said in people in people in church i said who wants to go to heaven everyone i said today i think i was left with three i said not today you know we can arrange another time but uh, today uh no, that's too much man we might love christ but not like this <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? When you get into those realms, yes, the reason why you hate heaven now, your eyes are not open. I'm about to tell you how to. Your oh, eyes are not oh, open. Oh, if you oh, see oh, what you need to see, oh, and you get in there and go like, what have I just seen? I don't mind hanging here. Why is it even seven years? We should have more years here. Hmm. So you don't understand why your uncle is not coming back. Your mother, your father, your cousin, your brother who died is not coming back. They don't care about you up there. They were even asked, do you want to go back? They said, never. To where? Say, so your family is dead. They look and say, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I need to be here. Imagine somebody has made it to heaven. And they never expected to make it. And they are now in. You tell them, go there. They say, ah! I might go and mess up two or three there. <laughs> and I will not come back here. No, no, no. Let, uh, let it stay. No, I'm okay with it. I'll wait for them here. Yeah. And there you go. You just enter. You see, you see Archangel Michael. You see Gabriel. You see all these angels. You see Moses. You see Abraham. You want to go to Paul to ask him what happened. You want to go to Abraham. You, you want to go to Adam and even say, Sister, what's, what's wrong with you? You, you, you want to... <sighs> and you know, you know, you know, you know. You need, ah, yeah. There are too many stories. You haven't even gotten to Jesus to try and figure out things. No. You hear music you never heard before. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Trust me. Now imagine this. Imagine the colors. The colors there are dependent on what, uh, what power, what light has ended you. Now hear this. Jesus said, the truth you know <laughs> shall set you free. I want you to understand, in the realm of the spirit, this is the most important statement of this teaching. In the realm of the spirit, you can't see what you don't know. Okay. I know you just missed it. In the realm of the spirit, you can never see what you do not know. Have you ever seen preachers with spectacles? You've seen them, right? And they are rich. I know one. I can't tell you his name. His name has to do with currents. Very rich guy. But his eyes still need healing. The reason is simple. It's not that he is stupid. No. He exercised his spirit towards money. Towards prosperity in the word. The truth you know is what sets you free. If you read about scriptures about, about prosperity, you will become prosperous. Yes. All right. If you want to get healed, what do you do? Scriptures on healing. Oh, okay. You're getting it. Why? Because... The entrance of thy word giveth light. Uh -huh. 
So if I want to be healed, I read scriptures to do with healing. And the light of healing enters my eye. Oh. If I want to see angels, I read about angels. And the light of... No, 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 no. They didn't get that. I know you just missed it. And, and right now I thought I had already released it. So I need the, the light about angels to enter my eye. So I can be able to see angels. Whatever light you exercise your spirit towards is what enters you. So whatever you want to see in the realm of the spirit, you have to study about it. Read on it. Read Ezekiel. Go to Zechariah. Go to the book of Revelation. See angels. See angels. See angels. See angels. See angels. Hear my message on angels. Listen to it day and night. Get it? Before you know it, you'll be sleeping like this. And Gabriel say, we are here. Listen, it is not because you internalized it. So many of you have watched movies with angels and you never saw an angel. Why? Because it was not based on the word. If you actually go on Melovin Avrakufia if you go on your electronic Bible and just type angels, read every verse. Then the angel did this. Then the angel did that. Then the angel. See, in the realm of the spirit, as much as you study the word and understand it, spirits will never be attracted to you unless you talk about them. Things of the spirit are only attracted to you when you get attracted to them. Whatever you get attracted to gets attracted to you. That's the realm of the spirit. So if I get attracted to understanding angels, angels get attracted to me. Mama, mean so too many of you have been reading the whole Bible. That's why people come to church and go, man of God, I don't know. I tithe. I come to church. I, I fast. I do things that are not working for me. I still, I'm still sick. Yeah, you have to be sick. Because the light that is entering you is you're a Christian. But it has nothing to do with your healing. Until you read scriptures about healing, healing affirmations, that's why we have healing institution. Institute. It has got that whole thing. All the pages are affirmations on a daily basis. The more you read towards it, the light of that word gets into you. It is the truth you know that sets you free. And remember, let me correct this. It is the truth you know that makes you free. Hear this. Truth you know makes you free, not sets you free. If I'm talking about setting you free, the King James sometimes has got a set free on other versions. In other words, if I do this, right, and I open this, and let's say this liquid here was, was alive and kicking and understanding and the emotions and everything. What I've done here by opening this, I have set the water free. But it's not going to come out. If I do this, this now is making it free. So sometimes I can go to the... To the to the jail to jail and open your door, uh, you have been set free. Until Kalumi and Kivai, until I open the gates and take the prisoner out and make him walk out, uh -huh. I have made him free. Uh -huh. So there is a big difference between setting you free and making you free. So. What's this? It is then the truth you know that makes you free. It grabs you by the, by the, by the neck and say, come out. Here it is. Go out and walk. So you exercise yourself towards that thing you need. Are you looking for money? Find scriptures on money. Because it's the only light that enters. Remember, this is brown based on the light that has entered your eye. If I bring a certain ray of light and enters you, a blue one, you will see this is blue. Have you not get, gotten into a place with neon lights and the things there look red, look what, because of the light that... You think it is the light that is on the thing. No, it is the light that just entered you. It's red. Come on. And now you're seeing a thing as red. So if you see something about angels or you see something about demons, this is what the problem with many Christians now who call themselves deliverance ministers. And I repeat, there is no such thing as a deliverance Come on. minister. Come on. There is no ministry of deliverance of demons here in the Bible. Not one. If you find it, you find it somewhere else, not the Bible. 
And I'm, I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It exists surely. You are a deliverance minister. So it exists. It just don't, no, it's not biblical. So while it exists in your house with your family, it is not in the Bible. Ooh, come on. The Bible itself has deliverance, but it has no deliverance ministers. Every Christian delivers. Come on. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on. You shall cast out demons and they shall go. So the problem is the deliverance ministers have gotten a certain affinity, rather, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, a certain level of curiosity with regards to demons that they've read on demons a lot. So they've attracted light for demons. So everything that they see is demons. They come to your church, the first thing that they see, demons. Not because they see. <laughs> But because what they read on is demons. Oh my God, you didn't hear me. So their knowledge is more on demons. Yes, sir. If you read about deliverance a lot, Satan a lot, generational case a lot, light for generational case enters you. So all you see if somebody is sick because they drank poison is a generational case. 